Today we're breaking down why bad guys are bad. Not why they're evil, but why it's bad that they're evil. You know what I mean? No. No, I don't. I don't. Let me explain, because this is a topic I absolutely love, and it is largely inspired by movie villains. Social psychologists Jonathan Haidt and Greg Lukianoff phrased this natural human desire for life to be simple as an untruth, stating that life is a battle between good people and evil people. It calls back to our tribalistic nature, wanting everything to be an us versus them. So for decades, blockbuster movies were all about the good guys beating the bad guys. And you always knew who the good guys were because we followed their story, we saw things from their perspective, and oh yeah, because the bad guys were murdering innocent children or burning down cities, laughing maniacally. Really anything that was a big cue to say, I'm evil, I should lose. And then they lose, and we all feel good about being on the right team. In 1995, the book, and shortly after that, the musical Wicked, which tells the story of the Wicked Witch of the West from The Wizard of Oz, is one of the first really popular pieces of media that showed things from the villain's point of view, showed that they weren't actually evil, they were just misunderstood. But Wicked didn't change the simple good versus evil dynamic, it just shifted it. Now it's the Wizard of Oz that's the evil bad guy. And honestly, he was pretty shady to begin with. These fairy tale from the villain's perspective retellings became more and more popular, but again, they usually kept the same general dynamic. And then, with the rise of superhero movies, we saw the giants like Marvel take on more complex and multifaceted villains by making them have more compelling motivations than just accumulating power or taking over the world. I plan on taking over the world. Black Panther's Eric Killmonger is a great example of a villain that audiences empathize with. The idea that people who have power and resources and influence should use that power to help those who are less fortunate is a solid message. But then he's also selfish and violent and clearly not all that well adjusted, so you still know he's the bad guy and he needs to lose. Thanos, one of the biggest blockbuster villains of all time, has the exact same issue. He doesn't want to take over the universe, he wants to save it. Except, his way of saving it is insane. He's even called the Mad Titan, which is where a lot of these compelling villains end up going. Instead of just being plain old evil, they make them crazy instead. Whether it's madness from pain, grief, or a traumatic past, they act so erratically and often violently that we can still pin them down as the bad guy very easily so we know who to cheer for. And it's a horrible lesson, because what do you do? in real life when someone says something you disagree with. Usually you'll find some way to label them crazy, stupid, or evil. Political opponent trying to pass a law you don't like? They must be evil. They hate you and want you to suffer. And if your neighbor votes for that same evil politician? Well then, they must be crazy. Or maybe brainwashed. These are the labels we use when we want to dismiss someone and treat them as the villain of our life. Someone who needs to be opposed and beaten by the good guys who are on your team. And it doesn't just apply to politics. You'll see similarly intense reactions if you ask people whether pineapple belongs on pizza or a variety of other petty topics. Right away, people start labeling their opponents as crazy, evil, or stupid. Our natural psychology wants the world to be us versus them, and then every story we have ever heard since the beginning of our memories reinforces that same message, that there are good people and evil people, and we want the good people to win. And of course, the good people are the people like us. But that's not how real life works. In real life, most people are good, and doing what they think is best. But wait! As soon as I say that, you're thinking of an exception. You're thinking, yeah, Dallin, that's true, except these guys, who are actually evil. But yes, even that exception, the people you're thinking of as the exception, still are likely convinced that they are good people doing their best for themselves and for the world. That is why I was so intrigued by what is 
almost an objectively bad movie, The Eternals. I made a whole video about how the writers failed to make me cheer for the heroes, which is fascinating. More than any other movie that tried to create a compelling villain, The Eternals made me feel like I might be on the side of planetary genocide. Which is... somewhat concerning. The point is, classic storytelling structures reinforce bad real-life behavior. Some of my most popular videos are the ones where I play the devil's advocate of both sides of a controversial issue, which is something that I'm going to be doing a lot more of. But my most popular videos are still really not popular in the grand scheme of things. Because nuance doesn't sell for most people. It doesn't get clicks and big box office ratings. Usually content that does well either validates why our team is right, or enrages us about how evil the other team is. So I don't expect Hollywood to get rid of cliché villains anytime soon. Oh sure, they'll keep making the shift from full-on dark side evil to they aren't really evil, they're just insane, because it lets them pretend to be morally complex and compelling. But really, it just hammers in the lesson that people who disagree with you are unreasonable and unstable, which is not how you make the world a better place.